This is a, a dedication of the facility that we've completed the, the installation of all of the hardware necessary to support the two big experiments and we're opening up the doors to uh, welcome in the many supporters we've had over the last uh, 10 years. We have uh, Governor Dugard, uh, Governor Rounds, we have representatives from the uh, Congressional Delegation, uh, we have the Associate Lab Director from uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, we have the Deputy Laboratory Director from Fermilab, President from School of Mines, President from Black Hills State University. Uh, we have many of the uh, PIs and, and investigators that are working on the Majorana Project and the Lux Project from Brown University, University of North Carolina, Los Alamos National Lab, Case Western, um, Yale University. Very excited. This is something we've been working on very hard uh, since 2007. So we're going to go down on the on the H uh, shaft in the H shaft on the on the cage that's recently been upgraded. So we have primary access through two different ways to the 4850 level, and the H will take us down to with about 100 meters of the Davis campus and uh, we'll look at the, the installation of the campus there, look at the clean rooms that have been installed, the large water tanks, the other infrastructure to uh, bring in the two experiments uh, before they fill it up with all their gear. This is a chance to actually see the, uh, uh, the, the underground laboratory before it gets overcrowded with scientists and scientific gear. Very, very, very happy to have you here today. It's been a long three years, and I want to show you the progress we've made with this lab. Um, where we're at right now is where, as Bill said, at the Big X on the 4850. Right to my left is the entrance to the Davis campus. That's going to be the home to the two experiments that we're going to be hosting, the Lux experiment and the Myrana experiment. They have a machine shop, an e-forming lab, and an assembly room. From this point, you'll move down to the historic Davis lab, where Dr. Gateskill and Dr. Shutt will talk about the Lux experiment. From here, you'll go down a stairwell and gather around the bottom of the 70,000 gallon tank for a photograph. Then walk up a decline and back out to the Big X for your ride up. Well, we're interested in properties of the neutrino and we're looking for a rare uh, decay, radioactive decay, that can only take place if neutrinos have particular characteristics. They'd have to have mass, and they'd have to be their own antiparticle. We'll be building the experiment in this room to look for this rare decay, and we need to be deep underground because we're very worried about other processes that can mask the decay we're looking for in our detector. So what we're doing here in this room is we are, have prepared a room that will allow us to build a detector that's going to be uh, using uh, germanium uh, as it's uh, both its target uh, or, or looking for the decay from that and also the detector of the decay. So we will be putting together a, uh, an array of, uh, of high purity germanium detectors that uh, allow us to look for these rare radioactive decays. And as we uh, put that together, we have to worry about any possible backgrounds. As Steve talked about, this is such a rare, rare decay uh, it's, it's almost impossible to see if you have any other sources of uh, radioactivity. So we're standing in the uh, Davis Laboratory, which is some one mile, 4,850 feet beneath the surface of the Earth. This lab has been newly constructed in order to site the Lux dark matter experiment, which we're going to use to look for the missing mass of the universe. The laboratory has to be this deep because if we were standing at the surface right now and I was to hold my hand out, there would be many cosmic rays passing through it every second. When we move a mile underground, we are in a situation where we have to wait over three months for a cosmic ray to pass through our hand. Because we're looking for extremely rare events, uh, this is a very important feature of this uh, underground laboratory. Behind me is a, uh, a clean room. Um, we, uh, we need to carefully control and remove all sorts of dirt that causes uh, radioactivity. The tank beneath my feet is um, 25 feet in diameter. Um, so what it's doing is the um, sort of everything is radioactive. The, uh, 
center of our detector is something like a trillion times less radioactive than the walls of this cavern. And so we got to reduce, we got to get rid of all the radioactivity that's coming out of the walls. This is a special place where Ray Davis uh, first measured solar neutrinos, right in this spot. Okay. And we're feel, we're we feel very fortunate okay, we that we're going to do an experiment in the same place. It's wonderful, but totally unrecognizable. <laughs> 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 want to see my shirt? I should show you my shirt. <laughs> Our forever. <laughs> You have seen the site is secure, it is safe, and it's well understood. It, this is a perfect site to do the sort of research uh, that we're looking forward to in the coming years. It's a site where we can stage experiments. We can put in the initial step, bigger steps, and grow with, with time. We have a lot of real estate down there that we can make sequential advantage, take sequential advantage of. Our physics textbooks now are indicating we don't know some things. I would hope in five years or ten years we'll have to republish all those textbooks and say we now understand this about the neutrinos. We have identified the dark matter and we did it here in the U.S. with a facility built in South Dakota. There really are world-leading experiments going on here now and uh, it's a really exciting time. So there's just really been tremendous pro progress on the site. and. Uh, you know, as an agency, the DOE is really proud to support this effort, and uh, we hope that uh, we have a uh, long-term future. Even with the generosity of home state, Governor Rounds' leadership, all the legislative support, uh, that wasn't enough. And then Governor Rounds had an incredible conversation with a very generous South Dakotan named Denny Sanford that put this dream within reach. By the end of their conversation, Denny had not only agreed to donate $50 million to help establish the Sanford Underground Research Facility, but he had also committed another $20 million to establish a Sanford Center for Science Education to be uh, provided on the surface campus. And we want to say thank you and are glad to have Denny here with us today, not only for the many millions of dollars you've donated to benefit research education here, but also the millions of dollars of philanthropy you've contributed all across this state and around the nation. Denny, would you stand up and let us thank you for your great philanthropy. <laughs> the inspiration and motivation for all of this activity and much more started right here right here with the quest for underground science. Quite often in history, significance is an afterthought. We don't realize how really important something is until years later. We've broken that rule here at the Sanford Underground Research Facility. We already know how important and significant this place is for us now and for the future of underground science and science education. And that's why all South Dakotans are so grateful for this fantastic facility. Thank you very, very much for the Department of Energy for your support to helping us make these last steps toward this day and for everyone else here today for making this dream come true. Thank you so much. <laughs>